everyone, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today we're talking about the Steel Series Sensei Wireless. Mmm, Sensei, very popular mouse, very good gaming mouse, packed into a wireless form factor, gaming on the go, plenty of other benefits, RGB lighting, seems too good to be true, isn't it? Well, we'll certainly see, that's for sure. Now let's start off then with the key specs. So SensorWise is packing out 8200 CPI laser sensor. It has a 20 hour battery life, which in my testing is more like 15 to 16 hours. A 1 MS response time, which is always good. An aluminium charging base, which we'll talk about very soon. Uh, an ambidextrous design, so this is just the, the same as the normal Sensei being ambidextrous, so that's really good for all you left handed mouse users out there. 8 programmable buttons and 16.8 million RGB color illumination on the mouse and on the base. So let's start off then with the design. We'll start with the mouse. So if you've ever used a Sensei before, you'll realize, hmm, this one looks exactly the same, and it pretty much is. There's a few little differentials, you know, the silver in the middle here, and a few other little bits and pieces, obviously the lighting, that uh, make it different. But the overall design is the same sleek and minimalistic type one we see, or somewhat minimalistic one we see on the Sensei that everyone really likes. It has the different finish on it, which I really like. The normal Sensei, uh, senseis, a lot of them had a very glossy finish, which I never really liked. Um, the Sensei Raw kind of remedied it with having the rubberized edition, which wouldn't have all the glossy finish on it. Uh, but still, it's, it's quite good. And this also has quite a, um, a premium feel to it, which you get with uh, most of the Steel Series products, or well, the higher end ones anyway. Um, but it just feels really good in the hand. It just it just feels well made. That's how I'd put it. Now there's also the base. So I'll just get here. Excuse me, Teddy. So it's this guy right here. So uh, this is a nice aluminium plating on the top. It looks really good and it has a rubberized bottom. Uh, so it grips really well. As you can see the cable going into it right here. So this works as the wireless receiver for your wireless mouse. As well as the charging unit. So you just put it straight on there like that and it will charge. So that's also quite good. Um, if you run out of power or whatever you need to be gaming, you can't leave it to charge, then you can pull this cable out here and put it into the top of the gaming mouse. So you can just switch it over so it just goes back to basically being a wired mouse. And there's a quick release on the top of the mouse here so that it doesn't uh, come unplugged when you're actually using it. Now, with all that out of the way, uh, let's talk about the mouse itself. So we've talked about uh, Sensei's previously, and, or have I? Hmm, I don't know if I've ever actually done a review of Sensei on this channel. Oh, well, I've used plenty of Sensei's, I'll put it that way. And uh, design-wise, this is exactly the same as we just said before, aside from a few tiny things. So comfort-wise, um, it's just awesome. This is the mouse a lot of people really like, purely because of the comfort. Uh, it just feels great in the hand really comfortable. It may not be the most ergonomic gaming mouse and it might be a little too small for some people out there with um, large hands. I mean I have relatively large hands as well but I found it very comfortable but um, other people might not if you have very very big hands. Um, so there's that side of it. The one thing I will say though is that it's quite heavy. Now all the Senseis are pretty heavy and this one's coming in at I believe 120 grams so it is getting fairly up there. But there's no adjustable weights and that's something all the sen none of the Senseis have adjustable weighting on them. So it's not really too unexpected. However it might be a bit too heavy for some people and the weight is all at the very uh, back of the mouse as well. Which some say might be a good thing but it's, it's just... It is quite heavy, uh, even compared to a normal Sensei, but all the Senseis have been relatively heavy. Personally, though, I don't think it's too heavy. I think it's perfect. I think the weight is really, really good. It has a really nice weight to it. So, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying some people might have an issue with the weight out there. Um, now, to the sensor. So, this sensor is just absolutely fantastic. I love the sensors in the Sensei. Um, they're just always so accurate and so good and it's just the same thing here. It, it's really, really good. The one thing I will say is you can raise the CPI all the way up to, CPI, DPI, same thing, remember, uh, all the way up to 16,400. Now I'm using a 4040p display at the moment and even on that it is absolutely ridiculous. I don't know why anyone 
would ever go that high. I mean, a lot of people tell me that anything over a thousand CPI is too high. Um, personally, I was using this guy on two thousand for the most part and set to certain games where I'd bump it up to three thousand. But uh, yeah, so uh, the sensor is obviously going to be fine in, even by standard. You know, eight thousand two hundred is plenty. Um, so yeah, and th another thing is they have to say is a lot of people complain about laser sensors, saying that the um, there's too much acceleration even when you don't want there to be and I didn't find that to be the case at all with this guy I thought it was really good and really good to use and uh, while I'm saying that when it was in wireless mode uh, I didn't notice any lag at all with it or you know not being responsive enough it was just perfect so yeah really really good in the um, sensor department now buttons and the scroll wheel so the buttons were awesome just like every other sensor I've used they have a really nice amount of travel because you really good feedback when you're playing a game this is uh, more of the case like you notice it more when you're playing uh, MOBAs or uh, RTS type games but you also notice that it's also quite helpful in first-person shooter games I find having that nice feedback um, you can just make something especially when you're using like sniper rifles and stuff like that it just makes it a little bit easier sometimes the side buttons as well also have really good feedback, nice amount of travel, so that was really good. And the scroll wheel, so so it's a bit more on the um, stiffer side than a lot of people probably be used to. If you ever find one of these in a store or something like that and you try it out, you'll probably be like, whoa, that scroll wheel is quite stiff. And the uh, scroll wheel button to push down is also stiff. I really like this though. It, it, it felt really premium. It didn't feel bad like it was stiff for the wrong reasons. It's very hard to explain for you guys, but just trust me on this. It just felt really good to me anyways. I thought it was a really, really good scroll wheel. Now, there's also the uh, additional features, which is uh, the Steel Series Engine 3, which is fantastic. It's just so straightforward to use. It's very easy, very well laid out. Uh, there's all the macro editor and uh, setting all the buttons. Then there's also you can set the colors for the uh, mouse itself, all the different ones you want, and also the ringer on the base plate. Um, I just set the base plate to be the um, battery indicator, so I'd always know if it was, you know, uh, what what sort of battery life I had left in it. Obviously, you can set the uh, CPI to whatever you want it to be. Set the uh, battery mode, so you can set it to a uh, like a battery power saving mode or just balance mode or a high performance mode. There's also a sleep timer, which is quite good. You can set the acceleration, deacceleration, which um, some people will like. The lift distance, which I never really bothered to adjust, but some people out there might like to adjust it. Angle snapping, again, some people might like it. And the polling rate, which I don't know why you would ever set it lower than a thousand, but I guess that's there if some people really want to. So um, yeah, there's that. Now, all that stuff sounds really, really good, right? So I, there's got to be some failings with it. Now, one thing I found to be quite annoying was getting it to reconnect. You have to hit this button here down the bottom. There's also a switch above it where you can turn it on and off. Um, but when you hit this button, it doesn't like automatically reconnect. It takes a few seconds, and that's kind of annoying when it goes to sleep. And then you have to you know, pr turn the mouse over, hit that button, and uh, wait for it to kind of wake up. It takes a few seconds. So that can be... A little bit annoying to get used to. I mean, if you've been using it for a while, it's probably not that bad. Um, and as I said before, the weight might be a little bit of a con. But overall, yeah, it seems um really good. If, if you know, is it, what was that, Teddy? What's that? It's two hundred and fifty dollars. Whoa, two hundred and fifty dollars. Now that changes things. As you guys know, I love to give you guys consumer advice because that's primarily why I make these videos. And at two hundred and fifty New Zealand dollars. This guy is just too expensive. Honestly, I just have to say, it is an absolutely fantastic mouse. I'm not saying it's bad at all by any means, but it's just way too expensive. Not only that, but there's the issue that the wireless receiver, the plate, the base plate, is so big. Imagine if you were buying this for gaming on the go and you got to lug that thing around with you. What happened to the tiny like USB connector type ones? You know the ones I'm talking about, the little little ones that are, you know, basically just a tiny uh, two centimeter by two centimeter USB connector, well maybe a tiny bit bigger than that, but you know what I'm saying. You know, what's the, those little ones, you just pop them on the side of the, the um, laptop or something and then uh, uh, off you go. It doesn't have that either. The batteries are not removable as, as far as I know and the charging times are a little bit high on it. Um, the other big problem with it is that unless you have a USB charging port that still works when the computer is turned off, um, when you turn the computer off, it's not going to be charging. 
So that's another point. If you just put it on the charger, and I'll turn the computer off and uh, you know head to bed or whatever, it's just gonna, it's not gonna charge overnight. So that's another big problem. But the price is the main issue I have here. It's just way too expensive. So what do I recommend then if this guy is too expensive? Well, if you're wanting to stay with Steel Series, I'd recommend going to the uh, Sensei Roar. Uh, you can get the rubberized one if you don't want a glossy one. It's just, it's all the best parts of a Sensei with all the parts you don't need. And uh, it's coming in at, at New Zealand. It's about half the price of this guy. And you're not losing out that much. It's the same design. It's got an excellent sensor around. The buttons are the same. You know, really, really good. You, you don't get the coloring, so that might be a downside. The lighting, I mean. But, um, you know, that's not the end of the world. And overall, I just think that the Sensei Roar is a much better value for money mouse than this guy is. By far. By absolutely far. It's just way too expensive. However, money stuff aside, if you just don't care about the money, and you just want an absolutely fantastic wireless gaming mouse, then 100% go for this guy, or if it's on special or whatever, then go for it. It is awesome, it is really good to use, and it's really open my eyes to wireless gaming mice, which previously I'd always thought, uh oh, response times, uh, it's not that good, you know, uh, that, you know, battery life. Where this guy is just open my eyes up to it, and wow, it is seriously good, but as I said, just a little bit on the pricey side. Now I thank you all for watching this video, please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already because it really helps me out and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.